there for the next series as well. Genji taking notes. Uh huh. I imagine they All definitely right. were. We banned Belveth. <laughs> we banned mm -hmm. Viego. Mm -hmm. Draft taken care of. <laughs> let's get Speaking of taking care of drafts, let's jump into this one. Already, the Callista is going to be taken away alongside the Vi. Kanavi going to have to try something else. And some scout champions being dealt with here on the side <laughs> of JDG. Scout definitely an issue. But it was easily dealt with by JDG last time around. Just build the fortress. Already you see it too. Another Orn ban here coming from LNG. The 369 staple. That thing is just provides so much front line. Yeah, particularly after seeing uh, the Azir incidents in the first game, or rather, <laughs> you know, what the opponents had to deal with. I think the Azir always is going to get taken away. The Orianna is interesting to me, though, because, as mentioned, uh, we have started to see some possible answers to it, although, based on last game, the Akali not quite working out. Does mean that Gala is going to get his hands on Zaya, and I expect there to be the, the trade. classic trade. Although, the trade. Chase Maokai yeah. is available, and that is an LPL staple. And uh, Jace Malkai uh, Kaiser is on the table uh, yeah. for JDG. There is no way that we're going to see a Kaiser and Zaya at the same time unless um, Scout wants to try his hand at it, but I don't think that's happening. Blind Tarzan. Kaiser mid. Yeah, it does mean that the Lover's Duo is available. So Tarzan can lock away this J4, and then they can take the Rakan if they would like to, and it looks like that yeah. is going to be the goal. <laughs> so definitely LNG still with a bunch of power. Yeah, very, very much like to. And you mentioned the Jarvan for Tarzan previous. Yeah. I feel like the first game was like, he was warming up, calibrating, and then second yep. game was almost perfect with it. So expect those early ganks coming as well. Very, very annoying for the solo lanes. Probably just get that trade. The Zaya Kaisa we will see a hundred times over probably this tournament. Yeah, yeah. We uh, have seen some experimentation. I, I, I do think that you know the the Zix uh, remains an answer, but let's not get ourselves. Ruler is never going to play that when he can play a normal lady carry. I mean, um, Ruler, he's just not the guy. No, uh, he, he even, doesn't do it. And even also in the full lost. awesome dude meta that um, uh, that Papa Smithy coined, he was not one <laughs> never. that went down with uh, these these mages. And I, I think that the power of Kaiser right now is worth it. The fact that you're playing into a J. Four, which with the Cataclysm is going to have a guaranteed way to, at the very least, force your ultimate, right? Kaiser is somewhat susceptible to getting locked down, particularly when you pair it with a Rakan. Uh, I do think the Maokai provides a little bit more safety. We'll see what missing ends up going for here as well. Wouldn't be surprised if it's something to try and keep Ruler even safer. Yeah, and I like uh, JDG continuing bans here towards Scout uh, since they've already got the Jace Fortnite double protection bans. Really just push Scout as far down as they possibly can. Dealing with two of these champions that have that CC that can make those skirmishes happen and, and make Jace's life a little bit more scary. Yeah, so. like they've actually taken away five of uh, Scout's favorite champions, right? Including the fact that the Jace has been locked in here as well, most likely heading towards Knight. Of course, Korean teams do really like putting the Jace towards the top lane, but I expect 369 is going to be playing a tank. As Speaking of 369, the Poppy is going to be banned away as well. Um, he's, of course, incredible on that champion as well. So anything that can peel is what he wants to head towards. Does mean that compared to the previous game, the top lane pool is a lot more open. We'll see if they want to prioritize picking up something like the Cassante. Instead, it is going to be the Rel lock-in. Rel guys are very strong 2v2. Rel, obviously, one of the most versatile uh, champions that we have at the moment, and will also synergize really well with the market to set up big engages. And it's it's crazy to layered engage. You know, sometimes you're always like, oh my god, Zaya is so hard to engage on. It's the counter-engage champion because of the ultimate. But when you have Mal Okay, as well as Rel, you get to space them out, uh, and you have a two-tiered engage there that you can still get back to them and have those big combos. So, like it from JDG, they're not, Whoa. not scared of it at all. All right, well, there is a Silas. It yeah. is going to be locked in against whatever Knight is going to be playing, of course. Could be the Jace. And we've seen Silas is a response to Jace many times in the past. Missing, thinking about an Aatrox, but of course that's not going to happen. Asante <laughs> is up and available. 369, let's see what he is going to be playing here into mm -hmm. the Crocodile. The classic would be the Nah, mm -hmm. um, but is it going to be? We'll just have to find out. Always. He's, he's like, look at all these fun tools I know. that I have. We've Go. got Jack still available, Cassante still available. Like, this is last pick, and he can pick from anything he wants. Well, can he? <laughs> uh, because I assume Rule is sitting there going, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Frontline, please. Yeah. Uh, I do like always, though, the Silas when you're picking into the Maokai. Obviously, the two most talked about ultimates are always yep. Maokai and Alistar. But I actually think Maokai is way better than the Alistar because it has offensive use. An Alistar ultimate is purely defensive. Um, so really, really interesting pickup here where 
Um, they're going to have to have some big plays from Gala, I feel like. The, the carry pants to come on here from LNG if they want to stay in this series. Exactly right. And Magnet Storm from Asylus as well is uh, something I'd be very, very scared of. And the fact that Asylus can go all out just seems really weird to me. So very, very cool stuff here from Scout. And I think that eyes are going to be glued to him trying to get them to a game three. And I think Tarzan specifically will be one of those, if not two of those eyeballs. Sometimes he looks uh, multiple lanes at the same time. That is true. <laughs> uh, because Jarvan, you have to be worried about even level two ganks coming through. If you're playing Jace trying to har harass the Silas, this is prime example of easy gank material here. Jarvan. Let's see the angle that Tar Tarzan goes for because mid lane is going to be one of his highest priorities with that Silas. If you can get an early kill onto the Jace, then the game is completely different. Yeah, I'd rather have Tarzan go early aggressive, try and flip, introduce as much volatility as possible because if the game goes anything like the last one where JDG have either, like they did in the last one, a slight lead or go even, you're just not expected to be able to actually beat them down. No, exactly right. But it is now time, ladies and gentlemen, to head towards Summoner's Rift here all year long. LNG versus JDG has gone the distance. All year long, it has been JDG reigning supreme. But this would be a 2-0. They would win here, and that is just not how this one goes. So we're hoping that LNG can make sure we get as much as possible out of this series. Speaking of getting as much as possible, you can earn exclusive Worlds 2023 drops just by watching on LollySports.com. <laughs> really Free smooth. stuff. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I love it. Do you like that segue? The, um, the best Kobe? thing, the best things are free. Yeah, I, <laughs> I always knew you were a true professional. I did not know you were such a good sellout. Love it. It's what I was trying to do. We don't get to sell out that much because uh, global. St okay, never mind. This is this is what oh, I'm talking okay. about though. When you're facing a Jarvan, you everything running through your mind is all right. Where is this guy at level one immediately? Because Tarzan could come at our mid lane level two. So I love that JDG. That play right there even just shows they have it. They're aware of it. So we're gonna see Kanabi do a lot of work on this Maokai, trying to lay those saplings down, keep track of Tarzan. That's your number one job for the early stages of the game. The best Maokais starting out the game um, can possibly sometimes have flash W ganks and flash W plays to get some. Uh, offensive potential, but I would just settle for keeping track of that Jarvan. Oh, Scout already pressing the two buttons that he has available to him. Of course, it's the same button, but it does different things. <laughs> so, if you press the same button twice, is it two buttons available? Well, I mean, the button mm. changes to a different button when you press okay. the same button. Yeah. So I'm going to say it's uh -huh. two buttons because it, it's like abduct, abscond, right? Yeah. Two different spells. You're, Maybe I shouldn't pressing, say buttons, I should pressing, say spells. You're pressing E twice. Ronicler, let's give it to him. <laughs> he, he, he had a really good sellout. Uh, he's, he's earning. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I need to give let it to him. No, yeah. but like the entire year, I, I'm letting Atlas get away with stuff. Yeah, that's actually true. i got enough true. of it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, don't do that, Kobe. He needs, he needs this moment more <laughs> than I do. You don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see you very often, so I'm going to give it to you. Scout as well, going to be happy to pick up the rest of these minions as we now see Knight warding up towards top side. You can see they're constantly trying to keep vision uh, from both sides of that mid lane, make sure that they, they don't get interrupted early on. And Kanavi will continue his clear straight on up towards the top side. That ward did just now disappear, so he knows that they know. Uh, that he could see it uh, that I know, that he knows. Yeah, that that we all know, really, yeah. now. I, yeah, I really do like, as mentioned already, uh, not just the fact that they kept track of our Tarzan star, but also the multiple defensive wards, because Tarzan obviously also would have the opportunity to try and go in aggressive on Kanavi specifically, as he might be about to do here. Yeah, Tarzan is just hunting for him now, uh, because they did see him with the expiring ward towards the Raptors. He wanted to come try and smite fight the big Krug. He doesn't get the big one, because Kanavi is able to get it himself just before Tarzan's in range but steals away a couple of the small ones and man the small little cruggies those things are very valuable they did move a lot of the extra gold into it so yep that's where the away. money's at uh-huh and now he's got the smite advantage because he knows he saw kanavi use his smite on that pitiful large <laughs> krug that is barely wow. worth your time anymore so i would take this every day of the week i love it from tarzan you know you think this through um big buff. Uh, red buff in, in exchange for a big krug no problem also great use of uh, the fact that Zika was able to get some early pressure and priority towards the top side of the map. So Kanavi, unfortunately, going to have to give up a decent amount of his jungle. We'll be able to get the bot side scuttle, but still going to be put behind a little bit on the bat. Also has gone for the first strike and the red trinket. So assumption is particularly because I think that the Lethality build 
has not been that great when you're playing into like Jarvan and, and Renekton. I'm really hoping Ruler just goes for the classic build. Uh, is one of the situations where the AP damage on Maokai can actually have more value even after all the nerfs. And I love that you mentioned the, the red trinkets because uh, Scout with his early red trinket trying to clear out all the vision around mid lane to open up an avenue for Tarzan to come gank. Tarzan currently with the CS lead over Kanavi who is taking a little detour into LNG territory and is going to steal away his... Oh, never mind. He's looking for the... Uh, yeah. Steal away the Raptors, then possibly... <laughs> Chickens and then a potential gank onto Scout. Perhaps. Well, look look at all of the brush as well, dropping saplings everywhere. So he knows that when Tarzan comes to retake their red side, retake their own territory here, they will be alerted to it. And it is a uh, support roam timer as well, with Hung being the first one out on Rakan. All right, here towards the top side, what I, I did really like, um, Zegar, it sort of illustrates what he's been doing for LNG a lot as well. It feels like he's a selfless top laner. There's not a lot of those uh, yeah. if you've had experience with top laners, but Zika is very quick on the roam oftentimes. He buys advantages for himself and then uses them for his jungler for the rest of his team. And we saw that illustrated just earlier on. Has hit level 7 first as well. Of course, in the Cassante matchup, you do have a little bit of an advantage, especially once you get access to all of your spells. And LNG having a pretty good time here in this early game. Normally, I would flame players for being selfish if they were, you know, the, the typical selfish top. But top laners, they're conditioned to be like that. Oh, it's yeah, not, it's yeah, not yeah. their fault. I honestly, I don't There's blame There's not them. a lot up there, man. It's, it's a desert, <laughs> yeah. oftentimes. Yeah. Speaking of which, is it going to dodge the Q? But the all out is going to come on down here as 369 looking for it. The dominance has been popped, though. I don't think he wins this one, but Kanavi, he may help skew it their way. Still, Zeka stands his ground. He'll be fine. Yeah, Kanavi identifies, I am a level 4 tree, and that is a big crocodile. I'm not going to run the risk. Does ensure, though, that 369 is able to get alive, so I think still successful tension paid. Tarzan does get spotted by the sapling, but is making his way up. Might be able to zone him off the turret. Yeah, Tarzan got the dream oh. by with the whip coming in here. Tarzan was able to farm all the way to the level 5 and get the uh, Iron Spike whip on his first pack. That is, just feels so good for Jarvan. You get the AoE, you get the extra burst here. Extra button, even, yeah, Atlas. Exactly. That's what you need. As many <laughs> buttons as possible, Kobe. That's what I say every single time. Knight now just going to have to deal with the drive-by of the Commando Jarvan making his way through. And uh, Tarzan says, you're welcome, as he tries to push out the wave. Of course, things can be difficult for the Silas early on in Scout, showing us that uh, you can still do it just fine, even on CS, as Knight is now looking for a reset himself. Turret plate, turret plate. There it is. Very yummy stuff there for Zik, uh, being able to fight his way out of the, the 2v1, the delayed 2v1, uh, technically. Meanwhile, uh, it is going to be pushing bottom lane here for LNG with a dragon available. So I want to see what they do with this bottom side pressure. Tarzan has had control of the jungle for so long, and he's blending in with the brush. He's just standing there menacingly. <laughs> he's going in here, and this should be, I think, an uncontested, uh, especially with Knight backing. No teleport available. So this is really well done. LNG using their early leads and early prio yeah. and setting themselves up for a strong mid game. As a jungler, I, I actually do always try and use green skins. You know, all of the like <laughs> blend the, in the league partner skins because I'm like, wow, oh, maybe it'll help a little bit blending into the background there. Uh huh. Uh, any sort of pay to win advantage that you can try and sneak out. Is that why they all play Leprechaun Vyga? I, <laughs> I dislike that skin, man. Yep, fair enough. But it is, that's one of the pay to win ones, um, as far as they're concerned. There were a few more of them that used to be banned away, but there's a lot that have been dealt with. I Blitzcrank being my C personal careful now, favorite. Uh, Atlas, I remember the last time at the LCK, we did a fake, uh, fake our tier list once, and people were not, they not, were happy. not happy. They were not happy about our opinions. Yeah, but I, like, I'm with I you. like to trigger people with the Leprechaun Viker skin. <laughs> Shamrock Malphite, though, big fan. Big fan. Oh, just uh, just make the rock skin. green. Yeah. It's like the end of uh, Princess Mononoke. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sad. I was expecting more Malphite, particularly with how popular Cassante has been, as well as the fact that immobile champions like Zaya and Kai'Sa have been so meta, but it hasn't really come uh, to fruition that much. Yeah, one of, the, one of the difficult things is that so many mages got some nice buffs, and so yeah. there's kind of plentiful AP uh, in most compositions. This one, of course, JDG pretty AD heavy, of course, on their side with the Jace uh, mid here, so... Could have been a possible options there. But, I mean, this is actually Renekton going... Renekton is, is eating well. Yeah, and it's actually, I was going to say, going really well for LNG, considering, you know, they've got the early dragon. Um, Silas here to a pretty smooth mid-game transition. 
And I want to see what they do about this Rift Herald because it is bottom lane's recalling and only Gala is going back towards bottom side right now. Let's see where Ruler heads out of lane. Looks like he, he is going to follow missing. All right, so Rift Herald on the menu, boys. Well, see whether we do get a full 5v5 or whether it's going to be something else. And the question that I want to ask is, at what point do you get worried for JDG in a team fight? Do they have Never. to be behind like 7,000 gold, 9, 000, like 11,000? Like how, how much of a difference does there need to be before you're worried about them in a 5v5? I start to get worried when their Nexus explodes. Ah, <laughs> right, okay. That's well, really you, good you, to know. You are a very carefree man, Kobe. <laughs> I, I, I think we should get worried a little bit before that, but... Uh, Looking at the LNG comp, I do think there is plenty of team fighting power. The one downside is that if you get to like the 30 minute mark and you're not really far ahead and you're Renekton and Jarvan, then they do kind of start to feel like paper, right? Eventually they're going to get shredded through. But if they can maintain this lead, set themselves up, get that uh, Herald as we see they have now done, maybe use it to try and get some additional gold uh, towards, uh, for example, Gala, towards that bot side, put Ruler further behind. It's going to delay the moment when JDG really gets to use their team fight power. Yeah, the JDG are definitely setting up a bot side play. Look at these deep, deep wards they've got through the red quadrant of the jungle. I expect Kanavi to come down here with the Maokai. Maokai ultimate at the ready for him, flash at the ready for him. JDG might make some sort of strong push for themselves. Jarvan. All right, Ruler and Missing is getting things shoved out here towards the bottom side. And I think we're looking at two minutes before we get another kerfuffle. Mm. Going to be that next dragon in the form of the mountain. A few fun options when it comes to the souls still available. Hangangala just standing their ground. You can see things very, very even CS-wise here on the bottom side. But it does really feel to me like JDG is biding their time. They're just waiting for that window, waiting for that opportunity. As Ruler doesn't want to wait too much longer. He's taking a bit of damage there as uh, Missing is going to throw out the Lance and does find Hung. But still, LNG looking like they do have a bit of a tempo advantage here in this early game. Feeling a little bit better than uh, perhaps how things were going in game one. All right. Rift Herald options here for Tarzan as well. Pushing bottom lane, doesn't want to go for it there. So it looks like they're going to rotate on up towards mid, popping the Squires, but... Okay. Important here as well is that JDG is actually very aware, right, because of the vision you mentioned earlier, Kobe. They're uh, spotted Tarzan twice now, once on his Krugs, then the second time. So we do see that JDG not really at any risk right now. Know that Jarvan also went back. Drake is spawning, though. And in about 45 seconds, I would expect JDG to actually try and make a move. If you can isolate a target and blow them up with a killer instinct, could be an angle into setting yourself up for an early objective. There's actually a pretty big discrepancy. Everybody just got their first items except for supports Ooh. and Gala. So no completion on the Mythic here for Gala. Ruler was able to get uh, the Storm Razor completed for Kaisa. So JDG with the extra item completion might actually try and force. Oh, I'm not going to be able to make it over the wall. It does have quite a few dashes available, so he'll be all right. But it looked a little bit silly. The one advantage that LNG do have, and it's a pretty big one, is the fact that 369 used his teleport. Zika did not, so he can get down there at any moment. 369 does have his Thorn Mail complete, certainly something that we've seen bought into a uh, Renekton in the past. It's not our personal favorite, but it does kind of work out. If you deliver to a turret, though, as 369 does go all out, things could become a bit of a problem, but going to avoid the third Q, and the Crocodile can just slink away into the Fog of War and then threaten this dragon fight. Yeah, now you have a Cassante with no teleport and no ultimate, so definitely huge, huge advantage as far as LNG goes, and they're going to use it. I actually do like that attempt from 369. I don't think he actually expects to take Zika down there, but if you chunk him out and force him to back, then that might in of itself be enough as Harold gets placed down mid. All right. Shelly going to get a bit of a headache here. Unless Kanavi can stop that one from happening, she is readying the charge, though, so there go the plates. And, gentlemen, this is the latest First Blood that we've had this world. I was not expecting it in an LPL versus LPL match. I was yeah. promised action. <laughs> um, it as is an LCK LNG. commentator, yeah. we are starved for that oftentimes throughout the year. Uh, so uh, it's just not really delivering on that front. But still, I do love the jockeying for position. I don't uh -oh. find that I'm actually... I, I don't need any kills. I, Honestly, like, if... If someone's Nexus is threatened and it's still 0-0, zero, zero, not worried. Uh, you're literally lying to my face. You don't love nothing happening no, we do. right here. No, but we on, actually no, we do. do. We, we do, have actually. to. Yeah, we have to. Like, oh uh, this it, is how we're conditioned. That, 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 otherwise, uh, there is no choice. Yeah. 
That we is wouldn't no be in our region. You just have to. I feel you like I'm to... getting gaslit. No, right you're not. Now. <laughs> no, 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 no. You no. have to. Okay. My favorite part. Trust of the, us. My favorite part of the last sequence, though, is that you know you Zika. He, he's not forced back to back at all. The gore drinker Renekton is proxying between two lanes, and then Scout comes on up with the Maokai ultimate. He's able to just get rid of that one. Yeah, going a little bit aggressive here. Does find the chain lash, but not going to get the second. Uh, portion of it and the MasterCard lane economy snapshot is looking a lot more LNG this time around and especially a bit crocodilian. <laughs> I, I do kind of feel bad for LNG though because again we have Chemtech Soul, right? Like it's the second time in a row and in this one they're actually looking really good. Imagine if you're able to get Inferno or Hextech which gives so much combat power might actually help you to tie you over because obviously the JDG uh, team comp later in the game is going to be really big. Right now though with that first turn blood picked up two and a half K gold lead approached here for LNG and we'll see when JDG decide to pull the trigger because you know they're just they're biding their time they're waiting right getting their item finishes done but at some point they're gonna have to do something because if they keep giving up every single objective even though I'm not the biggest <laughs> Camtech soul enjoyer it's gonna be a problem uh, eventually I'm glad we got the LCK experts up here for the games with that, without kills and you know that at some point they are in fact going to have to do something eventually, about it yeah. well I mean it's Camtech so, so maybe yeah. not I'm getting the full experience up here I love it what was our latest first one I think it was 18 and a half minutes no, I think uh, we, in we, the LCK this season. Then we can beat that. We're not far off. Exactly. I think we've only got three minutes time. Having a look at the clocks, we have the second Rift Herald. Shirley might ruin us when it comes to getting even later mm. on that first blood, but maybe it'll just be given up as 369 is pushing out this top lane. Should be able to put a decent dent into this turret, but Sante not exactly the best at doing that. Zika getting a bit aggressive, but 369 not looking too worried. Let's have that ultimate back available once again. And he's going to settle for some minions. And JDG, on vision, just going to look to take down the second I mean, Herald. Scout, Scout has teleport, but he, he's he's up at the bottom turret right now. Oh, it's being used. Let's right. go. Now let's see whether this is actually going to be that first blood. The Rift Herald is going to be secured. But now Kanavi's in trouble. He's charmed up. He's taken down first blood at 16 minutes for Scout. Teleports in, picks up the kill. Now has a Magnus Storm. Can't get over the wall to save his life, but he's already done a pretty good job. It's so anticlimactic. I was faking actual action. What do you mean that Holy was first blood chronicle? Holy Kanavi goes down, and that's the end of it. Hmm. Objective goes to Alan G. <laughs> I like Kobe's response. Hmm. Yeah, that's I, the analysis. Because I'm still actually, not, I'm not perfectly convinced that you guys actually enjoy the no action, <laughs> because your reaction okay. there was one so, of disbelief. So Kanavi did get the, uh, the smite of, but they didn't get the... So the thing is that <laughs> in an LCK game, we would not have been talking about the game for the last 10 minutes. Yeah, we'd probably be still on uh, Shamrock Malphite at this point. It's missing in a bit of trouble as well. Could be a second kill pretty quickly. Flag and Drag comes in. He avoids the knock-up, but not going to be able to avoid the takedown as Knight throws in a Shock Blast. That is not going to really do anything. And LNG retain a stranglehold on the game. I mean, it's looking pretty good for LNG here. Scout now able to get his Zonias as well. Shiny new active item for him. And they can just rotate the rest of them down to bottom side, push it on this turret, keep on snowballing for themselves. Super deep vision being dropped. Jungle starts to get taxed a little bit here. And it feels really good to get Zonyas this early, especially into a Jace. Like, answering this guy in a side lane is going to be very, very difficult uh, uh, for JDG. And Ruler going to be pretty happy that he hasn't gone towards the Lethality build himself. Yeah, it's also, again, uh, the only source, reliable source of a uh, AP damage is specifically the Maokai. So they can, uh, another look here, it's just Kanavi getting 100 to 0. Not really a whole lot that he can do there. The charm and the uh, flag and drag come through. Yeah, at least with his dying breath, he does get the Rift Herald. Yeah. So LNG aren't able to get the Rift Herald. Kill for uh, the 300 gold there. Missing though. Gets trapped, gives up one extra one. Yeah, not going to be able to get out of this one. Pretty slow when you're wandering around wearing your horse instead of. Uh, Who would have thought? Metal pants, kind yeah, of. It's not it. Kind of hard to run in those. It, it seems uncomfortable as well. <laughs> I can imagine. You know, dragging all so, that so way. So do not recommend. No, yeah. oh, I wouldn't. Oh! Never actually done it myself, but now we've got Scout going golden. There is the Nature's Grasp. They're looking for the re-engage. Missing's right in the middle, but I don't know whether it's going to work. The Blade Caller is massive, and Tarzan going to lock down. Missing some low health bars, but Scout is still going to be able to get rid of Knight. 369 is trying to do what he can, and they do manage to collect two. But 
369 is going to go down. Zigger is the most gigantic crocodile I've ever seen, and Kanavi's running for the hills. This outer turret could be in trouble too. Yeah, LNG can take everything right now. They're going to keep on pushing as well as rotate Renekton down to bottom side. Bottom side tower is actually lower, easier to take. So they're going to send Zika towards bottom side, push that wave out, grab the tower gold, and get the dragon. And in a free for two trade, LNG going to be very happy. Pick up the objective, pick up the dragon, set themselves up for soul points, and making sure that JDG don't get that comeback team fight that they're looking for. And look at this. It's Scout versus Ruler. Scout single-handedly wins this team fight because even though he doesn't kill Ruler, Ruler has no HP and no ultimate. So that Kai'Sa does not get to enter the fight. He throws one W. As the rest of the team, it has to deal with all of the extra damage coming through from Gala. And even though Gala is killed by 369, it's the full commitment there. No extra addition from Ruler because he was forced out so early that allow LNG to win that, pick up the extra objectives, and really push this lead. And one of the biggest things that people often criticize uh, when going for these type of defensive builds, right? And I think Knights and Chovy are really good examples of players that are able to actually make use of it. Scout making a great argument for himself to be included in that club as well is that the defensive items actually allow you to make plays like that. If you go for a more offensive item, you know, without the Zonias, you can't make that play. And Scout really, really bouncing back in a beautiful way after a very rough Akali game. Hmm. You'd think a player like that would have won MVP a couple Guess times. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty good. And maybe a, a maybe a championship to boot. Oh, yeah, seem to remember good. you there, Kobe. <laughs> uh, for that one, he got an MVP there as well. It was pretty impressive. Three zero one now on the Silas, heading towards that get death cap as right. item number three. He's done with the defensive choices. He just wants as much damage we're, as uh, possible from now on. We're looking at the stairway to heaven here for LNG. Yeah. They're looking to walk straight It's up. the coach's dream, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. as linear as possible. Nice work, gentlemen, when they step off the rift. If there are any of those dips, that's when you know you're going to get a talking to. Right now, they're doing just fine. Stocks up and to the right. Nat should transition into some Baron control. See how dangerous it is to actually get the vision behind it, though. And I wouldn't mind him trying to uh, force some fights now that they're so much stronger. Not allow JDG to slow down the game, try and get more item finishes done, you know, get a second item for Ruler. But instead, fight them now while your Renekton is sitting on two items, while you have this huge gold lead, and while you have the threat of a soul to boot. Well, Knight has spotted Zika here on his little flank over, and in fact, We'll try and send him packing. Does a fair bit of damage to the Crocodile, who isn't exactly too worried, but spotting him out is the main thing. Making sure that JDG are aware of the positions of both of these solo laners with Scout towards that top side. Only three man strong from LNG as Hung is doing his very best to keep things dark for JDG. Not exactly the perfect time to be going for a Baron. It still does a fair bit of damage here at 22 minutes into the game. Both of these teams need to be aware of it, and there is a lot of Baron damage available for LNG. So when it goes dark in that pit, expect to see JDG moving on over to make sure that there's no shenanigans, no funny business from LNG trying to sneak this one away. Yeah, thankfully for JDG, they do have a lot of poke tools here as well as a Maokai. So Kanavi doing that Maokai gameplay that everybody loves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see a bush? Take a sapling. Another bush, another sapling. And he's able to get... And if uh, there's action that could potentially happen, Kobe, you press your alt button and you walk away. Uh, that way we manage to keep things serene on Summoner's <laughs> Rift. And then your ult gets you some first strike money mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the saplings. And Scout takes that ult away and he does the same thing on the other side. Ah, shoot. It's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. Mm. You guys are cooking up some great plans. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. We'll see whether LNG and JDG <laughs> are in comms so they can execute on said plans, Chronicler. I, I got to say, though, you know, the, the, the previous L or the last LPL that it cost it was BLG, which gave me a very LPL experience. I think it's nice from LNG <laughs> yeah. to, to, to go back to, to what I know. And this is what the, I really the LPL appreciate. commentators and say, that LNG exactly. is the, uh, the, the LCK team. And that's I feel what they're right amazing at. Mm -hmm. They're just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been transplanted into the LCK as well with you guys. Hey, there we go. And meanwhile, Zika here working away. It's going to take a while uh, to, to, to really make a dent in Cassante, so he decides, not worth my time. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> even with Black Cleaver and, uh, and and trying to carve through, you, you're, it's it's Iceborne Gauntlet and, and Ford Mill. It's just it's not going to happen, unfortunately. That's Do Scout's see, though. problem. Just yeah. leave it to Scout. <laughs> it's fine. Once he gets Death Cap between that and First Strike, he'll be all right. Yeah.
In fact, the game will be Scout's problem at that point in time, and I have a feeling that he might be up to it. All right, well, we do have the two-item power spike for Gala now, finally. The Quick Blades plus the Kraken Slayer here on this Zaya. The Death Cap will be short to follow, so Scout is almost at three here going to peak. And LNG, they've already got the arrival of the Chemtech Soul in their eyes. Open Arms will be waiting, fighting for the vision leading up to it. JDG trying to work their way to, to enable themselves to have some sort of pathway. Oh, yeah, they got a bit of damage onto Tarzan. Now they're going to try and start this one up. But, oh, the chain's just barely missing onto Kanavi. And JDG, they'll grab some control of this river. LNG getting themselves into Fog of War. They have control vision all over this bottom side of the Scout. river. But JDG now have access. Ruler is going to move into the mid lane to put pressure on there as well as Scout. He has the nature's grasp. Knows that he can get over this wall. He's unseen by JDG right now. This angle is looking fantastic. But Ruler, he can be there in an instant. He has that killer instinct available. JDG missing. Can he find the engage opportunity? Can Scout then find the answer? As Nature's Grass is going to be used on both sides. And it's no button and no button for both of the jungler and the mid laner here to drake down relatively low. Tarzan in the back of that pit is going to be kicked out. And that is going to be the soul denied. Play caller is good though. Is missing. Looking to be the first one to go down. And there is the kill for LNG. 369 on the bottom side of the fight. Is oh! Scout. He flashes for it. And Ruler is going to answer. They'll buzz us so low as the cataclysm comes in. And it's the crocodile that reigns supreme. 369 going down incredibly low. Ruler close to full health. And there's a three man Q. And Tarzan fights the knock up. LNG win the fight. They denied the soul, but it cost them everything. Atlas, that is going to be the Baron as well for LNG. 369, he had eyes only for Tarzan. He keeps him out of the pit. Look at this. He initially forces Tarzan's flash by threatening to ultimate towards the rest of the team. And then they're going to keep up the pressure. After both those Maokai ultimates have been nullified, 369 takes Tarzan away, and they do deny that soul. But look at this team fight from Gala. Sets them all up, and they're able to take down Missing. And then here, the turn, absolutely incredible. Scout making sure, almost going down, baiting a knight, but then staying alive. And big for me at the beginning of the fight, Scout, not only did his ultimate do way more damage due to the fact that he's yep. Silas, but it also immediately forced Ruler's cleanse. So Ruler has to play way more defensive, waits with that killer instinct. And yeah, you lose one Camp Tech Drake. Who cares? You get the Baron, you get the team fight win, and we're looking good for free games. We absolutely are. This is what everyone was expecting after how these two teams have faced off against one another all year. 10-2, to though. This is a shellacking from LNG in this game number two. Looking absolutely fantastic. Might be enough momentum to get themselves oh. towards the next one. But this one isn't over just yet. As Kanavi going to have to break that stopwatch. He actually stopwatched to deny Scout the hijack. So he didn't want to give over the Maokai ultimate. Oh. So Scout's ult now on cooldown. There you go. I don't, I don't know if that's worth, it's, but... Uh, it's a very short cooldown. It's an expensive yeah. denial. No, it's already bad. It's yeah. almost up. Now you need to com just stay out of vision. Stay out of the way it's of level Scout. level 16. Yeah, this is going to be very, very difficult. Now there he, it is. It. he gets it anyway. So um, maybe not the best um, best use of that it money. It looks cool. As it got a bit of a battle towards the bottom side of the map. Zicker at 50% health up against 369. Taking a fair bit of damage back now, though. As JDG trying to deal with this siege, LNG just standing, protecting this siege minion. And there's a bunch of empowered minions heading towards his bottom side as well. So many leaks for JDG to patch up here on the sinking ship that is their base right now as the channel is going to be used. The Hex Flash gets missing out of the way, but Kanavi's not going to be so lucky as the Nature's Grasp is <laughs> so dangerous from Scout and LNG. They'll break down the front door and they're looking for even more here. Moving towards the Nexus Star at 369 as a decent angle, but it just he just doesn't seem to be able to find any way into a potentially good fight. Ruler trying to rain down his Q on the enemy team, but now it's 369 that's just going to get picked off, and JDG have not a lot of options left. They've only got one Nexus turret left here. Ruler and Knight, they're going to have to do a lot of damage. Yeah, they're diving forward. Tarzan just trying to get Knight, and he'll be able to pick that one up. Now there's no Nexus turrets left, and LNG just mop the floor with JDG here in game two. And as everyone predicted, we are going to a third. Whoever wins this next game is going to knockouts. LNG have consistently been able to push JDG to the edge. We get there again. A 